information out the door and be fully equipped to help your friends and family, both near and far. We're going to talk about that tonight. Should we start? It's a little bit early, but we got a lot to cover. Kind of a little bit to cover, but really a lot to cover. Pretty simple here tonight. Let's start with prayer. Dear God, I thank you for each one that is here tonight. I pray for our town. I pray for our county, our city, our state, Lord, our country, and our world. There is devastation. There is heartbreaking things, Lord. And we just, I have prayed your mercy since March of 2020. And I am beginning to see it. And I want to stand before your people tonight and praise you for your mercy. I just ask that you would clear our minds, that you would open our hearts, that we could um, be your hands and feet, that we could uh, assimilate and uh, metabolize this information um, in a way that is shareable to those um, in our circles and the circles beyond that and the circles beyond that. Be with all those that are struggling for their lives in the hospitals and at home and come here with your spirit, Lord, tonight. Amen. So there's a couple things um, I mentioned in the prayer that I've prayed God's mercy over this situation since March. Um, I want to begin by telling you that I was one of the people that was most freaked out. I'm already a germaphobe. I already, like, if you're sick, I'm not coming over. Like, I'll drop some soup on the porch, and I'm going to run because I'm not getting that. And the first person I deliver firewood, and the first person I took to that presumably had the virus... I had gloves on, and he handed me the money, and I took the money, and while he wasn't looking, I pulled my gloves inside out, and I closed the money in the gloves, and I opened the toolbox on the side of my truck, and I threw the money in there, and I shut the toolbox, and I got in the truck, and I hand sanitized this, and I opened the window, and I drove home like this so I wouldn't get the kids sick, and when I got home, I took a neti pot, and I put a bunch of iodine in there, and I burned every nose hair I had, and I, I, took, I undressed outside of my house, my heart was racing. I went and took a shower. I was a wuss. So I want to share with you um, what the last three weeks have looked like. Um, last meeting we had here was a summary of a church member we had that had been intensely sick with this, much closer to the grave than life. And this is something we learned at our last class. We've also learned a lot since then, and it all goes along with that, but it, parts of it have become much clearer. It's just like the Bible, as, as things unfold, parts of it stand out that, that was here the whole time, but now we understand more about it. Um, three weeks ago today was October 25, and on that day, I actually have some of my firewood customers here that I'm so glad to see, but um, on that day, I was caught up on my firewood, which hardly ever happens nowadays. And I was coming home, and I thought of a friend of mine, an old friend. We talk sometimes once, once every other month. It's nothing not to hear from him. And he came to my mind, and I texted him. I didn't hear anything back, and I called him. No answer. So I went to his house, and uh, when I got there, um, he was on his couch. Um, you had to yell at him to get him to respond to you, and then the responses would come like, 30 seconds later when he could gather them and just barely get them to you. Um, he had wet himself. He, his, he had a fever. Um, his, his blood oxygen content was 92%. His heart rate was 128. His fever was 102. His rep respirations were labored, but they were 36 a minute. Um, he was lethargic, distant, and not present. He thought he'd been there for one day, give or take. Um, so, which 100, when we look at respirations of 136, that's not quite panting, but that's doing a lot of work. So his oxygen was still pretty good, but the respirations, you can't do that for too long. Your oxygen, your body's going to go, Ooh, I can't do that. And they were probably going to slow and the oxygen was probably going to come down, but he thought he was only one day into it. So I called my go-to, my lifeline, 
And I said, what do I do? I said, oh, and he has a toothache. Maybe he's septic. I don't want to like miss the big picture here. And the fever, I'm thinking maybe he's septic. So maybe, and she said, well, the dentist isn't going to see him until you've ruled out the virus. So treat it like a virus and then we'll worry about the toothache. So I said, okay. So I'm thinking what this exactly means. So it took me three trips to my house. I don't know if I got one thing every time I went. I'm still not clear why it took me three trips, but I managed to get this, which this is an oximeter, which if you don't already have, you're going to want to get. This goes on your finger. And when I talk about this, I get really wound up. So my heart rate is not a good example of what your heart rate should be. But I'm sometimes in the 50s. But when I talk about this, it's like 128 was the other night. So um, his, let's just go. So I got this on one trip. And I text Chandra the stats. And then I got um, this thing here that we're going to spend most of our time on tonight. Um, I got that. And then I went home and... This is a thing we're going to discuss tonight that you can mix up. But he was barely well enough to turn on this button. Just barely well enough to turn on that button. And I thought, there's no way. He was shaky. I thought, there's no way he's going to open this and draw up these three things and do it in a sterile manner. So I had a little comp lab with my sister-in-law. And I said, I'm going to take this. So there's some paperwork on the table over there as to why I grabbed this. This is something I've used for 12 years. It's something that I've used on almost everything, pretty much. And so it is uh, called Vetresin. It is an animal product. You can get it in a human form. It is non-toxic. I am not here to push this. I'm just explaining to you why I grabbed this. Um, it is non-toxic. It does not leave a residue. It increases the oxygen on the surface area by 30% for 36 hours. It kills 99.9% .9 of all single-celled pathogens within 30 seconds of contact. And I knew he couldn't mix that up. And the thing is, we have to mix this, this, we have to go ahead and add this into here. And I thought, oh, I think he's well enough to do that. That's a couple of squirts. So I just went on a limb. I'd done it myself, and that was it. And I went on a limb and left him there with that, that night. So the next morning, so he, he nebulized at 6.30, 8.30, and 10 p.m. And four hours later, after his first nebulizing treatment, he walked into bed. Went to bed at 11 p.m. 12 hours later, huh? Yeah, oh yeah, he, I mean, to, to readjust on the couch was like pretty much non even. And so, um, so 12 hours later in the morning, I, I lay in a bed, my eyes pop open, and the first thing I do is I <laughs> reach for my phone and I just, I'm dreading this. Because I'd asked him the night before, I said, Can we go to the hospital? No, can we call your son? No. And so I'm dreading this phone call. I dial his number and call him, Hello. And I was, Good morning. And he's totally coherent. He is, um, when I get there to check him a little while later, his, ox his uh, temperature has dropped to a little bit low, 97.6. His oxygen is 96. And his heart rate is 96. And I prayed for him the night before, OK? I mean, every time this works, it feels like a miracle to me. And it's God's mercy. So I prayed over him before I left. Um, so I. After this all happened, I thought, what just happened? That's just crazy. So tonight, that's basically what we're going to cover. We're going to cover understanding the stages of the virus, how it works, and what goes on. Um, we're going to understand stopping the virus on day one and how important that is. And we're going to um, learn how to choose and operate a nebulizer. And then we are going to have some cautionary things after that that we have devastatingly learned the hard way. Um, Okay, so today, um, this event came about pretty quickly because of the uh, necessity that we feel for this information to get out and the fact that the holidays are coming up and we want you to be equipped for that and, and to be able to take things with you to the events and be free and be comfortable to gather and whatever you're going to do. Um, so this is cool. So this all happened basically Friday um, and then we discussed, we discussed it a little bit on Friday and then it came together and then out of the blue, my dad texts me and he says, we're coming down Monday night. And I said, oh my word, that's so perfect. So I want you guys to hear um, from my dad. Sometimes things come close to home. And I want you to hear a personal story. He's gonna, we're gonna tell a little bit about this stuff and then we're gonna get into how to use it. This is my dad. And because of the story, they get to know how old you are. I'm just finishing up my 84th trip around the sun. One of the uh, things you get living on the earth, you get a free trip around the sun every year. So yeah. So next month I will have completed the 84th. I'll start my 85th trip. But uh, my wife and I, a year ago, October, got COVID. 
I didn't know I had it. I, was, I thought it was an allergy. My nose was running and stuff. And, but I have this, you know, I have some allergies in the morning. I'm blowing my nose every morning anyway. But my wife had uh, uh, more serious. Um, she was weak for a few days. She had a fever. I had no fever. Uh, she was using I, up her essential oils because they had no smell anymore. They're probably bad, just using them up. I'm like, Mom? I didn't know I had COVID. I went down and got a haircut. They took my temperature, no problem. I went over and got a blood draw. They took my temperature, no problem. I went in two days later to get my physical. They took my temperature. I was fine. No, no fever at all. And so um, I got an airplane after I took my physical. I got an airplane, went back and did a seminar in Tennessee and astronomy and flew back home. And we got home and Amy says, you guys better get tested. You've been exposed. So we finally got around to testing. Sure enough, I had antibodies, and sh my wife had antibodies. And, uh, but I, but the theory, my thinking is, because I got it again, my theory is I had it so weak, I didn't have really good antibodies, and I got a super dose exposure. On Thursday, a couple weeks ago, two weeks ago, I got an airplane with a guy. We flew to Phoenix. We were together in meetings all day, Friday, Thursday and Friday, flew back on the plane. He was hacking, hacking, hacking. He said, oh, yesterday we were cleaning the backyard and I got all this dust in my lungs. And he didn't think it was COVID. And I didn't even think about being COVID and I thought I wouldn't get it anyway. Well, so I got a really good exposure and I got it on Sunday. We came back on the plane Friday and Sunday afternoon, all of a sudden I was feeling miserable. You know, hacking, coughing, blowing your nose. I went through tissues like you can't believe. Um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I, was, I said, if I don't, if I had another day of this, man, I'm going to get the infusion with the hospital. The monoclonal <clears throat> well, antibodies. Well, then Amy overnighted us a nebulizer and showed us how to use it. Two o'clock, I took the first treatment, and four hours later, at six o'clock, I took the second one. Then 10 o'clock, when I went to bed, I took a, the nebulizer, and by midnight, I knew I was over it. I mean, I, I could tell immediately that, I mean, you're just like constantly blowing your nose and hacking. And uh, next morning, I was ready to go to work, and uh, I did. She insisted I take take it easy, which I did I said. for a couple of days. I said, "I'll ring your uh, neck." Getting the back. point is, my wife never got. The, the, I mean, here we are in the same house, no mask, and 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 she, I think, got a really good uh, antibodies because she had it worse than I did. She had. We didn't know. She, she had an infection in her leg, and, and we thought maybe that's why her temperature was up, you know. And so my theory is I had a really weak antibodies because I had a weak case, but she had a stronger case, probably had a lot stronger antibodies. And here we are in the same house, no mask, and, and eating together and everything. And she didn't get it, but I had it, you know. Okay, any questions? <laughs> so, um... I, you know, I could be dead. Yeah. We have some really good friends right now in Lincoln, Nebraska, <laughs> that, and, and he's half my age. His lung collapsed, and his wife went into the hospital today, and they didn't know about the nebulizer till we just, we didn't know about it till what, a week and a half ago, two weeks ago. And uh, another very good, one of my best friends uh, has been suffering for about three weeks. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we could go Friday night, we, we, my wife drove the nebulizer up and gave him the treatments, and he's a younger, you know, 20 years younger than I am, and I mean, he was miserable, suffering, weak, and he <laughs> took the, the treatment uh, Friday night. He called me up at 7 in the morning and said, I'm ready to run a marathon. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, he still has some issues, you know. He fought it for three weeks. Because he fought it for three weeks, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and I just was, what, three days, Sunday night, Monday, Tuesday, mm -hmm. Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm thankful for this. I could be mm. dead. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What did you nebulize? What did you nebulize? When, when which, which products? Well, I, I alternated between the two. Letrocin, hydrogen peroxide, saline, and iodine mixture, right? We did that every other trip. We did that. One and then the other. Yeah. So I would just want, let's all say this together. Ready? Good. We're going to just keep randomly coming back to that. Um, this is a really good thing to be aware of. The inflammation and the clotting are the most dangerous. If you can stop the virus from replicating early on, you will stop the production of the spike protein and therefore minimize inflammation and clotting. 
Okay, that's from a COVID prevention packet that's back there on the table. I don't have enough copies. It's 42 pages long, but if you want to flip through it and take any screenshots of it, or if you want to leave your email, we can leave a paper back there and any of this stuff we can just send to you. So the first thing I want to just really focus on here is understanding the virus. Um, I've, there's been a couple points where I've just knelt down and told the Lord, I am so done with this. This hurts. It's heartbreaking to walk with this. It's exciting and exhilarating and then heartbreaking sometimes to walk this road with people. And so um, the other night, uh, Friday night, I told the Lord, I was building the fire in the fireplace. It was in the middle of the night. And I told the Lord, I said, I am so over this. Like, what do you really want me to keep pushing this? Do you, am I pushing ahead of you? Is this where you want me? And it was like instantaneous. And the stages of the virus came to me right there in front of my eyes. So you can see on your handout, if you need a handout, you can raise your hand and my husband maybe will bring one to you. Um, so the stages of the virus, the first stage is viral replication. So just like if we took a piece of firewood and started splitting it, every time we split it, we're going to get what? More and more. And then that piece can go over here and get split and make more. And that piece, so replication, think of replication, and that's taking place in your lungs. So viral replication is the first stage. The second stage is your body says, whoa, something is really wrong. And so your body floods the area with a total reaction of inflammation, right? And your body says, whoa, it's, it's really wrong. And so it brings inflammation and it tries to make it right. And then even your lung lining can thin because your body's going, we're, because of the inflammation, we're not getting oxygen. And so your oxygen's dropping and your body's going, okay, let's thin the lining of the lungs so we can transfer oxygen more readily through the lining of the lungs. And so that's the inflammation, inflammatory response, okay? And then the third stage is blood clots. Um, we're going to spend more time on all three stages later, but that is an overview. That's the first page on your handout. Something I didn't mention um, right as we started um, is that this is a testimonial. This is not medical advice. Um, I have medical training, but nothing in this field. And so um, all this is tonight is a testimonial of God's mercy. Um, so in Japan, uh, this, a big study came out saying that one in four of hospitalized patients with COVID uh, has blood clots as an after effect. Um, in Great Britain, there's one that says 20% um, of severe cases have uh, blood clots. And a uh, member of our own church, her nephew, um, was 39 last week, four days after COVID, walked out to the garage feeling pretty good and just over in the garage. So I say that because don't, because of a blood clot to your lungs, yeah. So I say that, don't think, oh, I, I don't know whatever you think would exempt you from blood clots, but it's something they're not talking about and the, we're losing people on the tail end. They're over COVID and it's blood clots and the wording is COVID complications, complications of COVID. And no, nothing of that would tell you to take an aspirin. You just think, oh, they died of COVID, right? So we need to, oh, I wasn't going to use that word, whoops. Um, okay, so we need to be aware of all three stages. So let's just look at your handout and say, um, first stage is replication. The second stage is the inflammatory response. Good. And the third stage is the blood clots. Okay. I'm going to let Chandra come up. She's going to talk with us a little bit about she's, um, every waking moment that I have, I research on COVID and what I can understand about the body function and this particular thing we're going to talk here tonight. But Chandra had time to really pour some time into the nebulizing part of it. And so, or choosing the nebulizer. And so she's going to just share that with you. Okay. Sometimes wanting to know the details. This is my sister-in-law, Chandra. <laughs> and this is my sister in This is my life. <laughs> Which is sort of a cool testimonial, too, because every time we do something together, <laughs> we are a disaster. from high school on, it's a disaster. We are a disaster. <laughs> trying to sneak up and... Oh, we <laughs> dump over paint cans. Oh, yeah. yeah We're so a disaster. So look out if we come to your house. <laughs> so this is God's mercy. This is God's mercy, for, yeah. For God's um, <laughs> work, we too. We work that together this, well. We work together well. It's, it's God. <laughs> <clears throat> so the details sometimes matter, sometimes don't. Big picture... Just get a nebulizer and use it, okay? But in doing the research and liking to know and have something that's a good quality product, um, I like to do a little more research and ask. So came up on um, one, a respiratory therapist at work and asked her something that 
today made a lot more sense. So let's go. There are three different types of nebulizers. Ultrasonic or cool mist, jet, and mesh. I had never heard of mesh until just today. Um, and I crossed out ultrasonic because they're just, they don't make, um, like if you have a diffuser for essential oils at home, it most likely uses ultrasonic technology and just shakes it and it gets into a, a particle um, into the air. So it's better than nothing. It is, gets something down in your lungs, but the other two get further. And because it makes the particle size smaller. So going back into this picture here, your upper respiratory tract, your throat, mouth, 10 to 15 micron size. So that mesh, uh, the, the ultrasonic would only go that far because it's just gonna be too small. It'll catch on the walls of your body habitus. Down into your trachea, five to 10 micron is the particle size. But down into your bronchus and lungs, which is this virus goes where? Mm -hmm. Down to your lungs, two to five micron. So, not every spot where you look says the micron size that it makes or what it is. So in just browsing Amazon today, um, you would see cool mist or ultrasonic or good for kids. And by and large, a desktop model, sometimes they're about this big, is going to be okay. Those are typically anything with a tube is usually a jet nebulizer. And um, the mesh is a newer technology. I think in 93 is so yeah, new relative, but by the time studies come around and we see the benefit, <clears throat> the mesh is, is just that, and it really forces that liquid through a super small mesh to make those small micron sizes. So my good friend <laughs> Fonda at, said, Chandra, what about this nebulizer here? And I had never heard the word mesh, and so this was a couple weeks ago, and she's, uh, she says, you know, and I said, well, I don't think handheld is, is very good. That's everything like you want a desktop model. And so I was like, I don't know. And today I messaged her, I'm like, does your thing say mesh anywhere on it? So she actually has a really good one and it really is this big. And it is portable, it doesn't have to be plugged in. You can take it to a friend's house, you can run into someone on the street, you can. <laughs> and so um, that's just a, a neat little thing that I just found out today that really there are some small ones that are really good. And they tend to be a bit more expensive, but there's one that I found today on Amazon that I actually purchased for only $45, which is very affordable for health and no hospital bills. <laughs> so. All right, so yeah, there's a couple different options. Here's all your apparatuses, um, apparati. Uh, if you have any questions or even afterwards, like come touch this stuff and Amy's gonna get more in depth too. So they're just choosing one. Now, how well, I don't think I'm gonna get more in depth on this, so let's stay at this. Okay. So this is the this is the mouthpiece you're gonna use. You could sterile, we kind of differ on this. Like I think like everybody should have their own, especially if they're preventing. Okay, and then Chandra is like, well, what's coming out is also cleaning. And so if you wipe this off with alcohol, you should be good. Okay, so one thing to think about, if you all are fighting the same bug, you're probably all fine to use the same one. If it's gonna stop you, like in your mind, if you think you're gonna want your own and you don't wanna put your mouth on something that the other person in the household or whatever, then you just need to buy a second one. There's five your bucks. your own stuff. This it's one okay. Was 12, and they buy, they yeah. come separate and they're yeah. you know way, way less expensive. If you um, have an oxygen concentrator at home that you have needs for, your oxygen company should give you the extra tubing and stuff for free so you can get a whole thing like this that would be part of your package if you happen to already have an order and need home oxygen. Or five bucks on Amazon. There you go, mm -hmm. and you can get a packet probably. Mm -hmm. So just cleaning in between, just wipe it off with the alcohol and a cotton ball, like just wipe it off or whichever. And then every so often, just run some vinegar through it. Same to as an oil diffuser at home, just put some vinegar in it and run it. And that's just gonna, gonna loosen up the particles and anything that's stuck in there. So that's. That's really all there is to it, guys. Just get a nebulizer and use it. And she talked about last meeting um, the uh, stats and things that were going on um, with our church. We're really our first intensive, like she was living there taking care of this person for a week and a half, and it was touch and go. And, and it was came down to the last like two hours around the nebulizing treatment that we saw, that they saw the huge changes in vitals. Oxygen started to come up. First time a temperature came down in two weeks. 
So um, a lot of that was shared last time, but that was really the first um, thing. So the next step would be choosing what to put in your nebulizer. Um, so the more her, both of us were kind of freaked out at first because we wanted to get it just right. Um, but the more research you do, the more you see that a lot of different things work or percentages and stuff work. Um, so this is what, when I go to people's house, this is what I've been, well, okay, let me rephrase that. If there's no caregiver, I'm still grabbing this because these people usually, when you walk in, usually they are too sick to manage a syringe and they look at the mills and it's just like, phew, like it's not happening. They're in bed. They're not getting out of their bed. So the beauty of this Vetrisin, and I am, I spoke with a chemist and a pharmacist um, that both feel that it's okay to nebulize. I am working my way into Vetrisins. I want to hear back from them from their development department to like hear more about it. Um, so like do your own research. I don't know what to say, but I can tell you um, we've only had, um, I've only really had about five or six people that were well enough to use this or had someone in the house who was well enough to use this. And so of 58, the rest of them have pretty much used this. Um, but the beauty of this is you can be laying in bed and you can reach over and just put a couple squirts in your nebulizer, right? And then you, you can twist this sideways, which most of them are just in bed. And when you turn that on, It might make them cough a little bit, first couple breaths. Um, you do want to remember in through your mouth and out through your nose. Think, just logically think of clearing the entire respiratory tract, okay? So as we're, we're breathing it in, if you sat here and you breathe <laughs> in and out through your nose, you're not taking anything into your lungs. So I've got some stickers. If you feel you need a sticker for your nebulizer over there, that says in through your mouth, down into your lungs and out through your nose. It's kind of an important, not something to get hung up on, but just look at them and make sure that the steam is taking a break and then going again. Um, so if they are well enough, this is much more tried and true than the horse stuff. Um, so it appears to us that the food grade hydrogen peroxide needs to be in a dark place. So I don't know what that's gonna look like exactly, but this is kind of what I've been taking to people when we go to them, if they're well enough to do this. Um, so what we would need to do is, let's start fresh here. What you'd need to do is 1.5 mils of, and it, this is all on your one handout. Your, your single page is the page you're going to work off of when you're helping a sick person. Okay, that has all your amounts on it. Your packet is for your knowledge. Like you read the packet and you assimilate the knowledge and then you throw that in a drawer somewhere. But that one single page, the reason we didn't staple it is you might slip it into a, a page protector and you might sit it up on your stove or whatever because it's telling you how often to give everything from vitamin C to when and how much of everything else. We were trying to s draw this up sterilely and we just, it's too cumbersome because you've got this to hang on to. You're trying to put this in a sterile, like the, how we were showing people is put this in there and then get your syringe and draw out of there and then put that in there. These people are sick, okay? They're not doing that. So this is the next best thing we've gotten to is this guy. So this is the 1.5 mil food grade hydrogen peroxide. Your side of your nebulizer has little lines on it. Most of them, this one goes up to six cc's. So you can take a guess here on what 1.5 would be. And then this would be your sterile saline. And you would add that guy, another 1.5 mils to, up to three. And then this is your iodine. And we could buy one bottle of iodine and it'd be enough for this whole room because there's 20, 20 drops in one, one mil, 20 droplets. And we're only gonna add one droplet here. And I told, I think you told me that would happen. <laughs> okay, I have another syringe that might work better. So I don't wanna nebulize this one, but somebody might want to. Um, out of the dropper bottle is better. Mine are all loaned out right now. So this was my best attempt at showing you iodine. So sorry about that. So out of the dropper, the bi iodine usually comes in a, like with a, um, a dropper in the top. And so it's really easy to get one drop. And that would have been our nebulized solution. Does that make sense? Is there any questions on that one? Does that make sense? Yeah, that, that recipe will make about 10 minutes. And that one will de, like if you do five minutes of it and set it down, it will denature because of the hydrogen peroxide in it, which is another benefit. 
I was finding for this because if they're not well enough and they can only get five minutes done, they can come back for their other five minutes. Yeah, yeah, your first few breaths might make you cough and encourage them to cough. That's good. A productive cough, we're finding, is like a really good thing. It turns into oxygen and water, right? Hydrogen peroxide. So that's the beauty of using uh, the hydrogen peroxide is it's killing the virus, it's shredding the virus, ripping it apart, and leaving behind oxygen, which is a good thing for your lungs, and water, moisture, which is a great thing for your lungs too. So, um, I mean, there is nothing... I want to take away from this solution other than I think if you're too sick to do it, I think it's probably better to do horse medicine than nothing. Yeah, yeah, so, right, right, right. You could still use it. It may just not have the full thing. So I kind of jumped ahead. This, the cool thing, this is cool. When you check out on Amazon with all this stuff that I've been buying all the time, um, this popped up. This is called Frequently Bought Together. It's down underneath, and it says Frequently Bought Together. Food grade hydrogen peroxide, 3%, saline, and iodine. Somebody else knows about this. I don't know where they live. I thought it was my phone. I thought, oh, it's because I've been searching all this stuff. So I got my sister-in-law's phone, and she hadn't searched any of this, and she's from Cheyenne. And we pulled it up. We clicked on the the nebulizer is at top. We clicked on the nebulizer and scrolled down, and this stuff shows up. This is the saline and in packets, sterile, ready to go. So if you feel like that, that's a great way to go. You can just twist off the top and, and put it right in the nebulizer. And the droplets will come out a lot better than that. I'm sorry. All my bottles are different places. So... This is, and, and on your sheet, these are not in any order, okay? They're not in, like, my favorite order, or they're just there to choose from availability and, and your own intuition of what you want to use. None of them have failed. Um, this is a third option of what to put in the nebulizer. This is a high-grade quality of colloidal silver would be a more common name, but this is, like, a professional-grade quality. It's called Argentine 23. You can put it straight in the nebulizer, so again, we're just dumping it straight in the nebulizer, just like Fetcherson. I cannot afford to give you guys all that stuff right there. So if you want that stuff on hand before you get sick, you better order it for yourself, because that guy right there is about $85. Pharmacist recommended. There's a little pharmacist in Tennessee, wonderful little guy, 83 years old. He takes his nebulizer house to house, and this is all he nebulizes, and he hasn't lost one person to the hospital and has not lost one person doing this. Okay. So very, very great thing to know. Okay, one comment on the vetricin. We talked about it a little bit. Um, the chemical formula is H-O-I-C, and I'm not sure if the chemist would, if I mess any of those letters up, but it, um, don't get the gel, okay? The gel is formulated to go like onto a wound and be packed over. Um, I just don't, I've never tried it. I don't have any idea what's in the gel, but... Let's, yeah, the nebulizer likes the light liquids and let's not put gel in our lungs. So just keep an eye out for this hydrogel. Great product. Let's not put it in the nebulizer. Okay, so here's some cool stuff. So for like two and a half weeks, yes. No, yes. We just want to avoid the, we want to avoid the gel. Mm -hmm. This is at Big R Tractor Supply and Frontier Feeds, except I guess too many people are finding out about it. So I have it on my list of people to contact. I'm going to call Frontier Feeds because I like to support little businesses and I'm going to tell them to order a case if they want. There's some at the pet store. Okay. So on Main Street. So I'm going to call Frontier Feeds and just tell them, like, hey, this is what's going on. And if you want to support local business, we're going to do the pet store and Frontier Feeds. But lately I've been hearing a lot of people are like, eh, it's out. And Big R is getting a shipment any day. Shauna called them any day. Um, did that answer your question? Okay. Okay. And you'll find all the animals on the front of it. And you can buy it in human form. I've never used a human form. I don't really know. Pearson is a human form. Two people I know have tried it. I don't know where to buy it online. I mean, by the time. My husband, being the forethought man that he is, ordered six last week, and we're vastly going through them quickly. So, yeah. Yeah. They come in a few days. Yep, Amazon. Yep, about $28 is what you can expect to pay for those. Um, So here's the cool thing. So for about two and a half weeks, this is happening every single day as someone knew my phone rings. She was with me one day. I said, 
all we do is we just answer the phone and we just, and then God sent something to my heart. Like, this is so weird, but I told you we run firewood. My firewood truck has never broke down on me in 12 years and probably eight years before that. I don't know. And it's, it's, the engine is out of it right now. So I could move firewood if I wanted to. So God has freed this time in my space of my mind that I don't feel badly. A, a friend of mine has agreed to call all my firewood people and explain to them what's going on. And so God is good. But, um, so for about two and a half weeks, I was not really aware of a lot of this going on. I mean, it was like I would just pray over these people and leave them stuff and just pray over them because what else are you going to do? And so in the last two days, I have been so excited to find that we are actually late to the party, that there is actually a lot of doctors doing this. And it's starting to, it um, has been, uh, like social media has promised to squash this. So you will not find this. It's hard to find. Um, the Washington Post had a nice article about it um, last week about how somebody doesn't say who, some group of as asthma people doesn't say who could possibly harm your lungs if you breathe that in. It doesn't say why. It doesn't say anything. And it says that they've agreed to squash this. So don't expect to find it readily um, online. But all, here's a list of all the doctors. Now here's another beautiful thing. They vary, okay? They vary in their thoughts. This guy's 0.04 of the hydrogen peroxide. This guy's 0.1. This guy's 0.3. He is dumping this into here, okay, wherever that guy went, and nebulizing. Okay, I will tell you, I took two, two breaths. That was enough for me. That's strong. So that is only to tell you, don't worry. Just get it in there and go. It's okay if it's a little less. If they say, whoa, that's burning my throat, add a little saline, okay? Um, Dr. Um, um, Dr. Uh, Levy here has wrote the book Rapid Virus Recovery on Amazon. I didn't know about this book. We're doing this and on a faith and a prayer and we're doing, and he has this book on Amazon and he says, he makes the assertion that there should never be another case of COVID-19 materialize ever. He said, if you catch it day one to three, there is no reason for there ever to be another severe case of this virus. And he's giving that book away. You can text me for the link or you can go on Amazon and order it, Kindle, whatever. But he is using all the way up to 3% hydrogen peroxide plain. Okay, that's the food grade and he's using that plain. So that's just to ease your mind that you're not going to get the right drip amount in there. If it's too strong, thin it out. Okay, that's the saline thinning it out. Um... I should maybe read this for the people listening. I don't know. Dr. David Brownstein, Frank, Frank um, oh man, how do you say that? Challenger? I can't remember. Uh, Robert Rowan, Thomas Levy, Dr. McCullough, and Dr. Youngren. And they all vary a little bit, but they are all, none of these have failed. Okay. For, for peroxide, yeah, for the virus. So the question is, should you wait for a positive test to nebulize? I feel like there's someone in, that in this room that could probably get up here and tell you. No, you do it even if you get a negative test, okay? This is so important, okay? Um, I should back up and tell you that Dr. Um, uh, Dr. Levy is doing this for irritable bowel syndrome. He's been doing this for like 20 or 30 years, um, and he is doing it for periodontitis, and there's a whole, I could talk here, I, I like amazing to relieve the gums of the, the um, inflammation and the bacteria around the lungs that drain into your heart. And it's actually reducing your, your chances of breast and heart disease. Crazy. So in other words, these things have been used for years. This wasn't like a, oh, let's just do this for COVID thing. These things have been used for years with no negative effects. And they, you don't have to ask what medication they're on. And I'm going to go on a limb. You don't have to ask if they're vaccinated. Okay. This works the same no matter what. It doesn't matter if you have been, haven't been, are on heart medication, aren't on this, have been that, have had a surgery. This does not decrease, uh, none of these decrease or increase any other, anything else that's taking place, whether it's natural or pharmaceutical that's in place. So you don't have to worry about interactions with other drugs. You don't have to ask them what, anything they're on. Um, wait for a positive. Okay. And you heard my dad describe, and a lot of people say the same thing. Thought it was allergies, a head cold, drainage. Uh, the neighbor was burning weeds. Um, nebulize. Okay. Sit down. I nebulize at home when I get home from all these houses. If I take my kids in, they nebulize when we get home. Okay. Um, an ounce of prevention is worth, what do you think? Like a thousand pounds of cure, especially when there isn't a cure. Okay, so what is this worth? Buy an oximeter, buy a nebulizer. Something else, when you call and check on your friends, this is the thing I've been hearing over and over. Oh, we're keeping an eye on them from afar. They're doing fine. Okay, can I go 
like, can I pop in? Can I, and I bring them lemon water and honey and broth, so it's more of a homey visit, but I can't wait to get this on their finger because I want to see what's really going on. And this is my best friend's mom. And um, she, her son-in-law happened to be at my house. I was at my kitchen, sat at my table and said, yeah, her mom's sick, da-da-da, but I think she's coming along okay. I I said, well, do you mind if I go pop in and check on her? And he's like, oh, yeah, she'd probably appreciate that. So I went up there, and she's like, yeah, I'm just, I mean, um, she's like, I think I'm getting there. My hands and feet are kind of tingly, and I'm, my head just hurts so bad when I stand up. I, my head is just pounding when I stand up. And, um, but she's like, I can breathe fine. Okay, listen to me. I can breathe fine. And she shows me. Okay, because of the media, we all think that you're going to not be able to get that next breath. The air's going in fine, folks. The oxygen is not going through the lung lining. Okay. So you're not, it's not a, it's a slow fade. It's not something you fight. It's like a, it's like lulls you, like a little less and a little less oxygen and a little less oxygen. And you don't fight it. You're pretty relaxed. I I mean, generally, yeah, generally. There's obviously different things, but yeah. So she tells me, I can breathe fine. And I put this on her finger and I'm like, Oh my goodness. So I got in a call shot. I'm like, this is like way over my thing. Like 84 is about when they admit you to the hospital, right? 84 is bad. 84 is bad. So she's 79. And so I call Chandra and she gave me some perspective and all that. So we nebulize besides, can I say that we got our oxygen? I don't know. She had oxygen. She had, she, yeah. So she needed oxygen. At this point, when you're getting readings like this, 79 oxygen, they need oxygen. Okay. Um, can I say how much? So she needed nine liters of oxygen. Eight, well, I think that one was up, and I do. We're thinking she's on nine liters of oxygen, and she, um, in order to get her up in the low 90s, and um, so we are thinking she's going to the hospital, right? It's just a matter of time. It's a ticking time bomb at this point, and so we are like, we are going to nebulize this girl back into everything we can. So we tell her husband, get her up every hour, because normally we don't wake then when they're resting, rest is really important for healing, and we normally don't wake them for, for nebulizing. But we're thinking, I mean, if she's in the hospital tomorrow, that's the end of that. So we got to get this virus out. So he woke her up very good every single night, and we rotated, okay? Because of se- severity of her symptoms, we did inhale. Um, budesonide is a hard prescription to get, but you can get this at Walmart or on Amazon, and it's on your front page. It's called budesonide. I feel like at the point of administering this, you should maybe just be in touch with someone that kind of knows like a little more, but it is nice to be able to get your hands onto it and have it on hand. Um, it is a nose spray. Um, it is a steroid and it is being applied just to right to the lung lining that is just helping the lung lining getting ahead of everything else. So to get this in here, it's kind of tricky. It's a nose spray. So it goes up like this. So you're going to Turn it like this and spray it. I don't know if the camera can get this. Do you need me to move to one side or the other? Is that okay? You want me to move to this side? So you're going to do 60 squirts like this, okay? And you're going to do these little squirts up in here like that, okay? And then when you get your 60 squirts in there, um, if you have, yes. Yeah. I'm going to ask her. (laughs) On your sheet, (coughs) can someone read to me what it says? How, and the budesonide, it's not highlighted, but on the nebulizer side, first Should column on, on the, the left. left. Nebulize okay. Okay. So I didn't put it in, in milligrams because it is a prescription. Um, to get the order, what a doctor would prescribe to you, it is 60 squirts. Um, we have had decent results with when we had to use this stuff, when you couldn't get a, prescri- a script with the 30. But if, so it, it goes quickly, it's decently expensive, hard, hard to get 30, between 30 and 60, no more than 60 squirts. If you want to jot that on your little thing is fine. Twice and then a day. That's twice a day. So let me just reiterate, this is kind of over here on this side of the table. This is, this is a steroid. We now are stepping out of the natural realm and into the like, we are going to do our last chance for you before things are really bad. And as so. you can see in the story, she was very sick yeah and, and definitely so we i got involved and i'm like this is something i felt comfortable recommending to her at a inflammatory state and with the the last class that we shared that is what we were able to get was mm-hmm. a script for this and it was after that medication and, and this that two hours later this in the prescription form an hour after that no temperature 
sats normal. She could hear us speaking normally. So that inflammatory response when you have not caught it early is very critical. So so I think once we realized what a prescription, I think we were probably at the 30 on the conservative end. And then I think once mm -hmm. we started seeing a few prescriptions, I think we felt comfortable to go up to the 60. Yeah. And we weren't sure what this, you know, it's a, it's a nasal spray. It's not, you know, so yeah, it's designed to go internally, but anyway, so that's, we, we just started with 30 do. and that's yeah. where we were at. Yeah. Yeah. So then once you've done, there's a little, um, thank you, Chandra, there's a little residue in the top and because it is expensive and hard to get and whatnot, if you just kind of take your saline and just give it a little sloosh, okay, then this is going to be if you just add in what you need to top off the rest of your thing, like there came up to six mils. So there you go. And there's Do your not waste design. what's in the top. And this is pretty thick. Yeah. And what yes. did we say earlier? We like the nebulizer likes thinner. Mm -hmm. So hence that saline in there. So there would be your pedestinite. And that would be only two times a day. And that would be only severe, severe things, severe situations. Um, okay. So inflammatory response. Okay. Um, like I told you at the beginning, there's two things that um, I've prayed, and that was, um, one was the mercy of God, and the other one to hear the voice of God. And I want to just share with you a couple things, because as you go forward as little missionaries, hands and feet, it says that our light will shine brighter and brighter until that perfect day. Okay? So we need to be able to hear God's voice. Okay? And there's someone here who's inspired me on hearing God's voice, and I'm not going to call her out, but she knows who she is. And um, so 2 a.m. one morning, I wake up, my chest is tight, and I sit up in bed, and I go, aspirin. It was just the only thing on my mind was aspirin. And we'd had at that point 28 people. This was Friday. What Friday would that have been? I don't know what Friday that was, but um, I don't know. A week and a half ago, maybe? Yeah. We'd had 28 people at that point that I had been directly with on this journey. Um, and, all, and it was nothing but roses. We had had nothing but, I mean, if it was day one to day three, you'll see that little chart on your thing. If they had been day one to day three, they're turning around four hours. If they had been day five to day seven, they're turning around in under 12 hours. And I mean a turnaround, like everything loosens up, the heart rate will come down 20 or 30 or more points, and the temperature's gone. Okay, and then 12, okay, that would, be, that would be 12 hours for about five to seven days. And then you get into nine to 12 days and you get closer to your 36 hours before, I'm not saying before you see anything change, but before you like um, don't feel like you need to be at their house two or three times, like before you start to think, okay, all right, we're moving in the right direction. Now the heart rate seems to be consistently the same thing coming down. And that's what Dr., um, I think I'm saying, Dr. Fulford um, does the Argentine silver. And that's what he said too. He feels like that heart rate is the first thing that starts to come down. So that's a good, think of it like an engine. I tell the guys, think of it like an engine and how many RPMs it's taking in order to keep that running and then shut your air intake down a little bit. Okay. And that engine's going, <laughs> so that's your respirations, right? And your heart rate. So all of that is telling you how your body's working and how, how distressed it is. So usually from the first nebulization, you see that heart rate just drop um, just in, so let's see, five to seven days is about 12 hours. And then, you know, you get into your 13 days all the way up to three weeks and they, they get some benefit off of, off of the nebulizer. Uh, some of them a lot of benefit, um, but your turnaround time now, praise the Lord, I don't think we've been more than 48 hours on any I think that's been the longest, and I think it may have been closer to 40 hours before you start to see, like, the fever break and, um, or stay gone. You'll see the fever break on the first 12 hours usually, but then, like, longer into that 40 or 48 hours when they're, like, coming up on two weeks into it. Um, so I woke up in the morning in aspirin. And I don't had no reason to think about this, okay? It's 2 a.m., and this is what I'm thinking is aspirin. So I wake up that morning, and I sit down with my phone, and I text 28 people. I text them the, uh, the information of where this came from, why they need to be on it, how much they need to be on it, and how many minutes. I said, go, it's, it's 1 hour 20. I texted some of you in this room. How, how many of you got a text from me about aspirin? Okay, cool. So I text them how, uh, how many, an hour and 20 minutes. Go listen to this, you know? I don't even know if I can finish this story without crying, but... Um, one, we can ball together. One gentleman and his wife were very sick and we went over and Amy did extra stuff on the gal had a earache too, just like the other guy had a mouth ache earlier. And so it was just, you know, she had well, other I got stuff. you to come cause they, they started Tuesday night late and they went Tuesday night, Wednesday, they nebulized. 
Thursday morning, I called her and I said, "Will you just go with me? Because I just don't know if it's getting. They I was getting in. Per, in yeah, I just I don't know if we're on track. I don't know if we're missing anything. I didn't know if I should just to have extra eyes over there because yeah. of how ill they were the night before. Yeah. So, so we, we go over that. and park in the driveway, and she's like, "Oh, they're they're too sick. We'll just go in. I, I you know, saw a little know. dog come out. Mm -hmm. Pretty soon the door opens. Mm -hmm. The husband came and let us in. He was up talking with us." He was oh, empty in his dishwasher. And that was one of the people that she texted. And the wife just didn't feel like watching it, watching the movie, the little section to explain the importance of the doctor sharing why it was important. And he had never had any aspirin. What day? Um, Sunday night was the beginning of kind of a dip, a lull. She, I didn't get any messages, but... Monday morning she called me. So Monday morning Amy went over and took him, in him. To, the ER, to the ER where he was admitted for high flow oxygen and they found blood clots in his lungs. And his stomach. And stomach. So he was doing fair. I was at work in the ICU. He was not in ICU. I peeked in, said hello on my way out. The second, my second day, which was his thir start of third day, he was just maintaining on a lot of oxygen. And Wednesday, I got a text. Sabbath, wasn't it Sabbath? I think it was Sabbath. Sabbath night, five o'clock. Yeah. So he was still in the, in the hospital all week. And at five o'clock on this couple days ago, Saturday afternoon, that he had passed away. He had needed to be ventilated, so stayed there for a couple of days, so a clot must have moved and just blocked off. It's really important, guys. Yeah. This, this isn't a big deal early on. That's why they're saying that. So take your aspirin because... If you haven't caught it, if before you... Before you get to then, like when you're still getting over the first two stages. That was one of the times I was ready to tell God that I was pretty well done doing this. So the... Man. So Fonda's husband was needed intubated because of COVID. It was a short term, he improved rapidly, and he's at home and he was at church this week on room air. Yeah. So we praise God for those right. blessings. She shared that while in the hospital, he was on anticoagulation, which is blood thinners, which they do to any admitted patient, simply because you're lying in a bed and you're at higher risk for blood clots, because that is well known. I don't know what dosage he was on, <clears throat> if it was just prophylactic for being an admitted patient or if it was because of COVID. They gave him no recommendations or prescriptions to go home with, is what she just said. And that's kind of what you hear. People have no idea. I work in the ER where we get people oxygen if they need it. We say, yes, you have it. Go home and quarantine. We're not sharing this. I, we're not here to discuss the whys. It doesn't matter, except for you can help make a difference for your family, for your friends. This is a part of the COVID process, what we're seeing. Certain people are at higher risk, whether it's your body <laughs> habitus, your lifestyle habits, your genes, whether some, you're at higher risk if you have been vaccinated. It's just how it is. It's very important. And so she shared that the, if you're getting care from a physician, which is great, you need to be evaluated by someone who knows sometimes. And not just this, I think this. It's all together, it's integrative but it's not something that we're passing on and sharing at, at the broad, um, the big picture, we're not sharing. So that's what she's saying. This is really important to pass on to people. My so, doctor refused any help. <clears throat> and so Ron suggested I go to this clinic and buy the chair's office for a house. So I went there and they gave me two prescriptions.
I wish we could rewind. I do. I didn't know anything. The only thing I need to do is bring you guys food. Learned a lot in a month. <laughs> Happy to. This last page is pretty much all about what we just talked about. I really hesitated to include the bottom part um, because it's a natural way to go about blood thinning. Um, I almost included that more for someone who couldn't take aspirin, like had a real good reason not to just take aspirin um, as some other things, but I just, please don't think that you're just gonna do this. And I don't know how to say this, but just please handle this page with a lot of care. Um, this is from UT Pines Institute. It's something they're doing and we've heard about it now um, from multiple people. Um, and I think it's a good program, um, but just really consider that last page um, as, I mean, nearly part of the most important part. Um, I want to tell you one more thing, one more story. Um, I thought I had one more slide in here. I don't see. Oh, here it is. Okay. As you serve the people around you, ask God. My son knows this little Bible verse, and he says, Lord, what would you have me to do? Pray that. Pray that you'll hear the voice behind you saying, turn left when it's time to turn left and turn right when it's time to turn right. I know the Lord woke me that morning with that aspirin thing. I know that that was him waking me up, but that I had no reason. It's been on our protocol, okay? But we'd been 28 people. I hadn't, I'd given them this, but I hadn't like highlighted it or anything. Ask the Lord for his voice and ask him for his spirit. I walked into my kitchen um, I'm having a hard time. Oh, Wednesday. Wednesday, I walk into my kitchen and I prayed. I said, okay, God, you know how the rest of my day is going to go? Because now our days, I mean, they change in a phone call, right? Our, they, everything can change. And so I prayed. I said, Lord, I was going up to my book club, which my women in my book club I love, and I wanted to take a nebulizer and just tell them about it real quick and just give them an overview before the holidays. And so I stood in my kitchen. I prayed. I said, Lord, could I make a, should I make vegetable soup or should I make, what's it called? charcuterie, a charcuterie tray. And I had bought, not that stuff, but a, stuff for a healthy charcuterie tray. And I prayed, Lord, I said, you know how the rest of my day is going to go. Just guide me here what would be the least stressful. Pastor Ron Kelly. Okay, let's try this again. Lord, vegetable soup or charcuterie tray? Pastor Ron Kelly. Okay. Grab my phone, go sit down at the table. A lot of you know Pastor Ron Kelly. He was here this summer for our camp meeting, and he hosted the COVID Coercion and Conscience Weekend. If you want any links for that, text me. It went to 120,000 views in just a few days on, on YouTube before they took it down. And it's an amazing compilation, a very balanced view of everything from how to apply for exemptions from your work or school, all the way to just a very balanced lawyers, doctors, a whole very balanced view. Um, and... So I sat down and I texted Pastor Kelly. I said, Pastor Kelly, has anybody talked to you about nebulizing for, for COVID? And when I set up his trip here, I mean, it was like weeks or months before I would, like, we would, like, really struggle to connect. And I thought, well, I'll just send the text and get back to my tray. He texts me right back and he says, well, my home test was negative, but I'm waiting on my other results. And I said, can I call you? And he said, yes. So I call him and I tell him about all this stuff. And I sent him pictures of how to do some stuff and how to whatever. And he says, well, more than for me, he says, we have someone in our church right now and her husband's in the hospital on a ventilator and she's home and her oxygen's 72 and she doesn't want to go. And we don't know what to do for her. And so in 30, 40 minutes there on the phone, we sat and I just went through, told him, sent him pictures on my screenshots and this and that. And I said, you have a way to communicate with your church. Somebody has a nebulizer. Somebody's kid had asthma. Somebody's grandma had emphysema. Somebody has this. Get that and get two of them if you can, one for you. And oxygen was, we talk about this whole thing. And um, 
I just want to encourage you to follow God. There's nothing more being more alive than hearing his voice and knowing, ask him. If you don't know, if you can't hear his voice, go back in your life to the last time you could hear it and plead with him to hear his voice. Um, he's doing quite well. He's got a nebulizer. He's doing quite well. He's, I, it's so fun. I wake up in the morning and on my phone is all these stats from all these people. Like, it's just the fun part of waking up in the morning is all these improvement stats. And, and so he's doing quite well and his lady is still at home. And um, that, was a, that was a case for the budesonide. Um, and she's still faring at home. And um, his secretary has, uh, is taking that nebulizer that they found at that prayer meeting and running house to house with it and making house calls with her nebulizer. So um, as your paper says, we're, I thought we were like at 35 or something, but I counted this morning and we're at 58 of no fail and I'm talking about knocking the virus out of your lungs, okay? No fail 55 times, okay? And a lot of prayer. But I do, I, so far, I have no reason not to stand with Dr. Levy and say that there's no reason for a COVID case to ever materialize. And the beautiful thing is you can have this conversation with your friends and neighbors, and it doesn't involve vaccination. It doesn't involve anything political. It's just your heart being willing to show up and tell them, call me on day one. So the other thing important for you to know is there is, I should have counted that because I would have said seven, but I bet we're double by that now. Um, places like my mom and my dad, where I told my mom, I said, you nebulize twice a day as preventative. I got our pastor one of these. Nebulize when you go home after you've been at church. Nebulize when you've been in the hospital visiting people, you know? So um, no case where the person who has been sick, living with the person who is well, where the person who's well has been nebulizing twice a day, in no case has the person who's well gotten any symptoms. Our friend we showed you with her stat, her husband took her into the hospital to get a chest scan because I was freaking out about blood clots and I, we all, yeah, it was a day we were freaking out after all this other blood clot stuff. And so her husband took her down to the urgent care to get CT scans. She, he didn't nebulize that day because he was with her all day and it was a busy day. And the next morning, she calls me and she's like, oh, he's coming down with it now. He's got the snot running. He's got the, the headache. And by that night, he was good to go. A couple treatments that day. So he got off schedule and he got on schedule. My mom nebulized as preventative. Um, and I, should, I, I didn't think to do that. I should have counted on my phone. But um, all of them, it, even people you would feel like would be more maybe susceptible. I don't know why we think who's susceptible and who's not. But um, I have not had any symptoms um, nebulizing as preventative. And praise the Lord, I mean, this little scared to death person with the money wadded up in my gloves by his grace, you know, I probably, I don't know how many houses I've been in, but praise the Lord, he's been merciful to me. Mm -hmm. So I think we'll wrap it up there. And then if there's any questions you want to ask off camera or what, look at you, the nebulizer, I did. I pretend I was laying in bed. You want to see it again? If you're laying in bed, you can turn that mouthpiece, and I'm telling you that because most people need it that way. So if they're laying in bed. Very few people, very few people will not notice results almost instantly. There's some kind of like, you know, I get texts like, oh man, this stuff is breaking up. I can tell, very, usually, pretty soon on, you can notice some pretty good results. Is there anything I missed? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I was debating on these other slides, but um, here's, a, here's a quote from uh, Review and Herald. As the right arm is connected with the body, so the health reform and medical missionary work is connected to the third angel's message, and it is to work effectively as the right arm for the defense of the body of truth. I don't know. I'm not really, like, I love prophecy, and I've gotten a lot more interested in it lately, but, I mean, the third angel's message is after the first and the second angel's message. So I don't know how y'all feel about that, but I feel like the Lord's coming really soon. When properly conducted, the health work is an entering wedge, making a way for other truths to reach the heart. Then the right arm will serve and protect the body. Isn't that amazing? 
Here's three angels' messages if we want to review them. Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come, and to worship him who has made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. So that's about worship, the creator. There's a lot of things that aren't, aren't believing he's the creator right now. There's a lot of thought of that. Another angel followed saying, Bab, these are kind of summarized, but Babylon has fallen, has fallen that great city because she has made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And I think fornication means mixing up stuff. Well, anyway. If anyone worships the beast and his image, this is the third one, and receives the mark on his forehead or on his hand, he himself shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God. So I just want to encourage you. Boy, that's not a very positive note to end on, but I want to encourage you to just pray. Ask God to, um, Friday I stopped at a neighbor's house and I just felt like I should go there that day and I told her about all this and she said, that's really strange you came today because I was exposed yesterday. And she was, you know, so, so ask God where he wants you to go. Say, where would you have me to go, Lord? Melody. No. Yeah. They, I listened to a neat thing just yesterday. Is it the same you listened to? Um, about the, as even saline is, is really good. And so I think, I think, yeah, it's less irritating. Maybe you can medically tell us. Probably, especially if you had seen that from a physician, there is sterile water for injection. Sterile water for inhalation is totally an appropriate thing to put in your lungs. As far as which is better, I know if I put water in my eyes with my contacts, it's going to burn because it's not the same um, pH. pH as the, the saline just is soothing to the body. So safety-wise, there should be no problem with that if you have no access to saline or even a contact solution, you know, throw that in there. Yeah, and we were reading that too about like if you're in Africa and you can only get perox, like do it. Just do it. No. I th I'd say if you're living with someone who's sick or you know you've been around someone who's sick, you do it a couple times. Both of you are well. I mean, two or three times a week seems like when I'm hearing, m mainly if you have a reason to do it, but the health benefits, man, that IBS, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, for the... <laughs> Any research you do using an alternative browser to some common ones will easily and readily pull up research articles on like, the peroxide like itself. Duck, duck, so go. as far as, yeah, DuckDuckGo is a good one. Um, there are lots of all the doctors she shared of health benefits outside of the issue that we're addressing specifically now. The other stuff, like just prophylactically, I, I don't think as long as you haven't don't have any symptoms, no, yeah, just mm -hmm. your supplements, your D, zinc, C are your big three mm -hmm. main supplements, your garlic state, you know. And then if you, you know you've been around someone, ooh, they were having a little hack. I mean, there's other illnesses out there besides the virus that we're discussing specifically. So anytime you've been exposed to something, yeah, do, a, do mm -hmm. one, you know, a day and a half or something like that. Mm -hmm. But um, of, unless you're wanting to treat some other health issues, that'd be to stick with the peroxide one too, but any of the other ones, if you have a reason to. I begged for it because my phone said that my phone time was up like 96% to like seven and a half hours a day was my average for last week. It's like if I could get a link, I just about lost my voice last week. There was a couple days where I was like, when I, at the end of the day, I'm like, whew, I think I'm gonna have a voice left. So I'm hoping we're gonna have a link. Not on the church site. We don't know where it's going to be. I don't know. Won't be on Facebook. Yep. Won't be on Facebook probably. I don't know. We don't know yet. There's a paper over here with a pen. Jot down your phone number, email address. <clears throat> if you want any of this stuff digitally to share, if you want to have maybe a link to this recording, whatever you would want, maybe just jot it down there specifically what you would want. And that would be a way to communicate in the future once, mm -hmm. once they figure once out I get a how it's going to be able to, to be shared, yeah, like what, you know, if it'll be to a site, it may be to rumble or something like that. Mm -hmm. But write yeah. your info over here afterwards. Yeah. Any other questions? Joy. There's grape juice over here as a little cheers to our blood thinning protocol. So take your aspirin with your grape juice. And there's the health bomb. Chandra was generous enough to bring us a health bomb tonight so we can have round two of our health bomb. Yeah. 
Um, most of the nebulizers that we've uh, gotten have been off Amazon. There's one on sale for right now for 59. Most of them have been 80. Um, we have about eight of them right now in circulation here. Um, not one of them has really been back to my house for more than a day before it goes somewhere. Um, and some people go to the last person's house and pick it up at that address. They wipe it off and put it on the porch and the next person picks it up there. So um, help me out, buy one, and then let me know you have one in case we get where we are in a, a scrunch. I gave you one Sabbath. You don't need two nebulizers, just two. Okay, good. You got one to loan out. Good, 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 good. Great. I'll put that in my phone. Anybody else have any thoughts? Any? Is there a specific name for that one? Um, this is a Respironics. Pack these when you go on a trip. These doctors, those listen to a thing, they're saying they never leave home without them. Pack them in your suitcase. Take them on a trip. You don't know who you're going to meet, where you're going to be. The Lord told me to take one when I went to my, I was in Denver the night my dad tested positive, And he told me to take one the day before. I knew it. I was leaving a guy's house. He was about done with it. And I thought I should ask him for that nebulizer. And I thought, there's nobody in Denver that's going to need that. Like, I'm going to my parents' house. They've already had it. I, nobody's going to need that. And I totally, I could have, I was 25 minutes away from my dad when he tested positive. I could have ran him that. So listen to the Lord's voice. Follow his voice. This is a Respironix Mini. Yeah. Can nebulize if you want. The squirt of iodine I put in there. Any other questions? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, if you don't tell anybody about it, in the back of my uh, folder there is a list of people that I know directly that have had complications with the vaccine. If you want to report those, you can do that. Um, and the site is, um, hold on, what is it? Um, Ferris, yeah. Vaccine, it's like... Yeah, B-A-R-E-S. You can go online and you can report. They estimate that they're tenfold under 100, what is it? I don't know, ma massively underreported. If you have had the vaccine and you are concerned about blood clots, talk to your doctor about a regular test. One, maybe, I don't know, regular was the word used to me, uh, maybe once every three months or whatever. And the test you want is called a D-dimer. And it's a test that tests your clotting and sees it. It's, it's checks to see if you're within the parameters that you need to be in. So I want to avoid, I promised some people by coming tonight that I would not make this a pro or anti-vaccine thing. And that is the beauty of this treatment. When, I mean, Shonda was asking me, she's like, are they vaccinated? I'm like, I don't know, I never even thought to ask them. I mean, I don't know. I haven't even gone there in my brain. Just get them, help them, get them well. Um, so that's the beauty of it is it bridges that gap. It bridges that gap. Yeah, just like the Lord. Yeah. Yeah, that's the beauty of it. But if you want to write anything on my last page, that isn't, I think I'm missing, I think I have another page. I don't know, I looked at it tonight and I feel like I had another note. But if you want to write anything on my back page, just put your name and who you know and what, um, you know, it's just, um, I guess it's interesting. But I, at the same time, we're here where we are and we have to go forward. So knowing, knowing some proactive things to do, pretty amazing. Okay, let's close with prayer. Dear God, I thank you for everyone that's here. I ask that this um, treatment might take wings, Lord. I ask it's already being done in Bermuda. It's being done in uh, the Carolinas, in Michigan, in uh, Washington. Um, and I, there are several other places, Lord. It's already spreading. And I just ask that this might be a tool that could dissipate the fear, Lord, that it surrounds the situation that we're in, that we could be, um, have love and power and a sound mind, um, and that we would not be fearful, Lord, that we could walk with you and hold your hand and be brave as we go forward to help those um, that you bring to us. And I just ask that you would send your Holy Spirit to each one in this room, Lord, that you would dissipate the fear and that we could take hold of your hand and we could follow you into your kingdom, Lord. We look forward to your soon coming. I believe it's eminently soon. It's exciting to be alive at this time of, of the world's history. 
And I just ask that we could, that our lights would shine brighter and brighter until that perfect day. Amen. Come up and touch stuff. Try it on your friends.